love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They will also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. What up, man? How you Yo, doing? It was good, man. You enjoyed your birthday? Yo, man, I really had a good time, man. Thanks, Stat. Thank you, Mace, for everything. <laughs> Dinner, uh, Sugar Dugger, uh, you guys put everything together for me. I had, a, I had a really good time because I wasn't planning on doing anything, so... Yeah. Uh, planning on not doing anything to the night I had was pretty good. It was, That's it was good. Really That's good, good. Man. That's I had a good. good time. Thank you again. I can't thank you enough, man. I know you don't, you my nigga, but I know you don't come out like that. So, <laughs> so you come in the den and everything. I really appreciate yeah. that. Thank you, bro. Welcome. Okay. So we're going to start the top of the show with a comment that Austin Rivers made. He what said, did he say now? He said, I don't want to see Bronny play with LeBron, him getting drafted and playing with his dad. I don't want negativity coming his way. He doesn't deserve it. He should play somewhere where he can niche out his own identity. Do you agree with his point? I'm going to let Cam go first on that pause. Mm. For real. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, Is that Austin Rivers need to shut the fuck up, basically. Like, yo, bro, my nigga. Because your dad didn't have you at the right time and try to figure it out mathematically so y'all two could be in the NBA together because the age gap probably was too different. Look, if your, if your pops had the opportunity, he's an NBA player. He played for a decent amount of years. You know, he's a former Nick. Yeah. If, you, if he figured out a way and... Like I said, Stat just told us this shit before the show started. Yeah. I just found this out. If he figured out a way, Doc Rivers, that is, for you and him to be in the NBA at the same time, because you're obviously a former NBA player, still want to be an NBA player. I know you're not getting picked up. So he's this a is, former NBA player? He's doing. A, he's works at ESPN right now. He doesn't have a job. In oh, NBA. yeah, I yeah. forgot. I forgot. Yeah, this is why he's so talkative and shit. He, he's not even getting picked up. So... Um, if yet if Doc Rivers figured out a way for him to be in the NBA with his son, you think they would not do that? Like you can't get mad at the opportunity. I think that it may not necessarily be um with LeBron. I can see what he's saying, the negativity, a lot of um attention to going go on, on Bronny, that is, and it, it'll be negative for him. I see what he's saying, but them James niggas might be built for that. It was pressure on his dad. Now, I'm yeah. not comparing Bronny to LeBron by a, 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 a fingernail. Not at all. Two totally different players. But I'm saying this to James family. If you could pull this off, pause. Pull it off. I'm not mad at it. It sounds like it's a little bit of hate. He's been very opinionated, uh, Austin, that is. What do you huh? think he could have done better, like as an NBA player or getting up to the NBA? What do you think um, Austin Rivers could have done better? You no, know, he had a decent, he had a decent career. Sometime he might get picked up again before. Um, That's decent. He's a, to me, my opinion is during the first part of his career, he was a decent, probably starting point guard, and he played came off the bench probably like the last three or four years. I think he's a great backup point guard. Definitely a third option if they're doing 12 players. I think he's really good. He knows the game. He grew up around basketball. It isn't like he just doesn't have a basketball IQ. Your father was Doc, is Doc Rivers, so you got a father who played in the NBA, coached in the NBA. When he's in high school, you get to be around the Celtics, mm -hmm. around when they're winning the championship, so on and so forth. So I think he has a great basketball IQ, but what happens is when you're not older, like 37, 38, 39, and you're not in the NBA, through the screen, you could see the bitterness. <laughs> you, <laughs> so you're saying all these guys that's yeah. talking about sports that used to play. Yeah. It's almost like listening to a rapper that didn't do well, and now he's talking about other rappers. Right, exactly. So the answer to my question is, answer your question is, um, I think it's... Nani could have done better. I mean, as far as doing better, I think he had a decent career. It's not for everybody to play 15, 20 years, you know? 
That's look, we gotta think about this. Isaiah Thomas played 13 years. Seemed like because we was young, yeah. he played a long time. When you play 11, 12 years, that's a great career for an NBA player. Dad, how many years Austin played? Right now. What well, you um, think about? What's your what's your what's your guessing? Guessing mm -hmm. what? How many years Austin played? They gotta guess. We could just find out exactly. Right. We watched the nigga come in the NBA. <laughs> no, I want to. I want to know what it seemed my, like. To see, oh, what it seemed like. Yeah. I say nine years. I say eight, eight to nine. Years, eight yeah. nine years, my opinion. And I, let's find out how old he is. You know, it's a weird dynamic too. You know, like he's married to Steph Curry's sister. Oh. It's like some weird, like the Curries and the Rivers is all like entwined through marriage and some wild shit. If he's married to the Currys, he should <laughs> he should have a better jump shot than that. Then. And not only I, that, the, not only that, the the Christmas Thanksgiving dinners as well. Cause Seth is still in the league, <laughs> so if <laughs> niggas is all if Steph Curry's his little sister, somebody, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like if yeah. you date my little sister, yeah, like my nigga, you he out the league, should still be in the league. Right. To answer your question, he played eleven years, spanning seven franchises. Yeah. So that's probably why right I thought eight right. years. He was a hot potato. <laughs> he bounced around from team. Mind you, no, his but dad even traded him too. If, so I can only imagine what, what, if you go to the Curry household, they gotta be shooting. They gotta be shooting, just playing around. It just wait a minute. So what team was that? So that just said his father yeah, traded him. He said, "I'm the only coach that has traded my son and my son-in-law." So that's also something to look at too, because Bronny playing with his dad and then being coached by your dad, but then your dad trading you. That got to be catastrophic. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that can be very post-traumatic that, that your dad traded you. Like, what do you say when you go home if your dad traded you? Like, for real. Like, like let's, let's pause. Roll. Who am I? You're, 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 you're Austin. I'm Austin? Yeah. Yo. And you just found out. I ain't tell it to you. <laughs> How you doing, son? <laughs> I'm Austin. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, at the office today, it wasn't my fault. But I don't know what you're talking to. Could you be more specific, Dad? What are you talking about? Um, you like your new team? You think that's how Doc Rivers tells his son, like that nigga? <laughs> you really think? Let me be Doc Rivers. <laughs> okay, okay. You be Doc Rivers. Yeah, I'm be Doc Rivers. Yo. You found out online. Listen, Austin, I did everything I could do. Doc seemed like you're pretty, pretty straightforward. Like, I did everything I could do. I talk, who, what team was this, the Clippers? Yeah. We talk with, man, yeah, I talk with the rest of management. What we're going to do, we're going to set you up in a better situation where you're going to get more playing time. Does the, mom know? But, see, you're, you're being emotional. Does mom know? Yes, she knows. And if she call didn't know, right you now. call her because I, we don't have time. Because, look, we need to get you on a flight to Chicago <laughs> because you'll be playing with the Bulls tomorrow. Mom, <laughs> can you believe dad <laughs> traded me? You're done with them too. Even mom is done with you. Yeah, y'all off my pension though. All the health care and everything else. So your mother get on her on your health care. You're selfish. <laughs> yeah, I'm a winner though, my nigga. I got a championship. What you got? Me. Without me, where would you be? <laughs> <laughs> you think Doc talking to him like? I don't know if, if Doc guy have a little yeah. Harlem in him for. <laughs> Yo, the changes, son, is crazy, dog. That's wild. I got to give him some more Harlem points for that. But overall, the, um, I just think that Austin, watching him, even when I watch him uh, outside of this conversation, he's, like, really, like, tense, like, when he's talking. He's real uptight, tense. He's making faces when other people are talking. Uh, LeBron, James, Bronny, if y'all guys have the opportunity to pull something off pause that nobody else has yeah. done, more power to you and salute. I seen last year, I think it was four different teams that LeBron played with, played against, where he played against the kids that were playing father as well. I remember this kid on Houston that walked up yeah. to him during the middle of the game and said, yo, you know your first year you played against my dad. And he's like, wow. So that goes to show the uh, longevity of LeBron James's career, man. But if you could pull it off, more power to him.
I think it would be super dope to see. And I think if anybody's going to do it, LeBron James can. So, Okay. Moving along, Joel Embiid will miss an extended period of time after suffering an injury that will require him to get knee surgery. So one, do you think the Sixers can remain on top without Embiid? And then does this change your view on the NBA player participation rule? I don't think that the, let me start by saying the Sixers are in big trouble if he doesn't come back fast enough because the Knicks are gaining momentum. As crazy as that sound falls, the Knicks are gaining momentum. Shout out to Sin. I heard you toy your Achilles trying to do what I do on the court. <laughs> and now you got the moon boot work working. And now you can get your Wi-Fi from the, the aliens. aliens. <laughs> I'm <laughs> back to you, oh, 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 I told that boy he don't go out there and play no play that man. He went out there and did it anyway. But yeah, the Knicks, I look at the Knicks as taking their spot. They'll probably be the second best team in the East. Um, and that's a lot to say because I know they're still Milwaukee and they're still Boston, but somehow I think the Knicks can pull something off pause. So if Joel and B don't get back, it's it's a curtain for them. And this will let us know that the process is not going to happen. After this, the process is not going to happen. This is his second time tearing the meniscus in his left knee or having that surgery on the left knee. And I don't think as a big man being paused at seven feet, you're going to keep messing up that knee and still keep playing. I don't want to speak it over. I'm praying that you get better, but you know, father time and and health will play a role if you keep messing How up. How old is Joel a beat, Step? He's young. Yeah, he's in his he got time. Twenty nine. But you can't keep messing up the knee now. Not as a not as a center. Oh, you talking? I'm, my bad. I don't give a fuck. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yo, I mean, you don't care about the process. I been gave up on the process. Joe M B when he had that shot to get to me, you like Kawhi? Go to Toronto. Step over. Go yeah, go to Toronto. Uh go there for one year, just learn the franchise. You had the opportunity. You had Jimmy Butler that year as well with the Sixers. They, that was their opportunity to win the N NBA championship. And I know it was a bounce was around a shot, shot and then goes in. But at the end of the day, that to me, that was the greatest opportunity that you had because not only that. You play Golden State, Golden State, KD is hurt, Klay Thompson gets hurt. And I'm not saying that um oh, they, they would have got a chip. Toronto would have beat um with those players playing. They would have not beat Golden State with a healthy KD and a healthy Klay Thompson. But that was their opportunity. You know, the process has been over for me. I wish he does come back. I think he's a great talent, great center, um, yeah. something we'd ever seen. Nigga just had 70 the other night. And he probably was a little, you no, know, we, we come up here and we fuck with the nigga and say, oh, you're not injured, you're not injured. And he's really fucking injured. So you got to think about it. When he had 70 points overnight, he might not have been 100%. We was like saying that, oh, you capping, you just had 70, you just had 70. Obviously, he wasn't capping, but to get 70, and we don't know this, but it seemed like he wasn't 100%. I think he's a great talent. But we can't keep what going with the process. What showed you that he wasn't 100%? I don't know if he's 100% or not. He was crying wolf, and then he got really hurt. That's my take. Okay. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying that we don't know for a fact. You could be 100% right, but I'm just saying, let's say he was a little injured and got 70. I just think he's a great talent. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit there and wait for the process. You know, it, I, I hate when I watch Instagram and niggas be like, two, three weeks going by, two, three months go by, Stay tuned, hashtag, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Nigga, you know how much content is out there? Nobody's staying tuned for what you keep telling us to stay <laughs> tuned to, bro. So um, I wish him well. I hope he does come back. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Without Joel Embiid, the Sixers could forget about this year. And now it's a catch-22 because let's say he does come back for the playoffs if the Sixers can make it, hold on and sustain and make it to the playoffs. And you're saying, do I want to put my franchise player in this position to try and wheel us to a championship knowing he's just coming back? Do you shut him down for the season or do you let him come back for the playoffs? 
Um, if he could come back for the second round of the playoff, if it's second round, if it's not first round, I'd leave him out. Gotcha. That's a tough decision for me as a uh, GM. Because as, as you get to the second round, everybody's playing better. Everybody's yes. playing at a different at a different level. Everybody's zoomed in on championships. So right. at that time, they're moving a little bit different than first round. Right. Tough decision, man. I'm glad I'm not in that position because if he tells you, y'all, yo, I'm, I'm ready to go and you're in a good position, pause to, to make a run. Yeah, I think by the time he comes back, they might lose They might lose home court, though. Mm-hmm. That don't make no sense. Whatever it is, I, I think I would shut him down until next season because, like you said, he has multiple injuries over the years in this year franchise player. Um, back to... Not just the Knicks. Another sleeper team is because the Knicks are always getting each other, everybody hyped. Like, <clears throat> I'm not going to say they the hype train that the Dallas Cowboys are, but New Yorkers uh, are delusional when it comes to the Knicks. Uh, very delusional. <laughs> My man Nick is in there. He's a, he's a Knicks fan. I see him. He say, yeah, we are. He, you know, niggas start saying crazy shit. <laughs> Yo, you, you see him Brunson at 40, right? I said Tyrese Maxey at 50 that night. Yeah, but it wasn't the 40 that Brunson had. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> mathematically. The 40 that Brunson mathematically, had. Mathematically, I think. When a nigga 50, had 50, 50 on him. Yeah, I'm it's like. It's crazy. No, they didn't play against each other just that night. Um, Maxie had 50 points the same night. But I think the Knicks, uh, I agree with you. Something special is going on right now in New York. I think that Brunson put that there. I don't yeah. think as much as I like Julius Randolph, I think he's a great player. I don't think he's a uh number one option. I don't even know if he's a number two option. Julius Randall at a number three option would be stupendous for the Knicks. Now yeah. I don't know who their number two option would be. That's what they probably need to figure out. If, if the Knicks had a great number two option and could move Julius Randall to the third option and I would elevate them to the second spot that you're talking about, but I can't put them ahead of Boston or Milwaukee at this particular time. And then also, I'm not sure if I want to put them ahead of Cleveland. Now, do I want the Knicks to do good? Of course, I'm a New Yorker. They always like, care, Mace, y'all yeah, don't, don't say nothing about it. like you want the Knicks to do well. I, I mean, I don't really care if they do well or not because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to go have high blood pressure building myself up year after year after year <laughs> to hope that we win and we don't win. I, I play it safe. I'm from Harlem. My team is the Harlem Globetrotters. We don't lose. <laughs> With 2019 and one, we never lost the game. That's my team. So, so, um, so what if LeBron goes to the Knicks? Uh, With this team they got now, would you Rich be? Rich Paul cleared it up. He said it won't happen, so I'm not even going to imagine it. When they started oh. talking that shit the other day, when they was like, oh, LeBron. Yeah, could that, be- that looked crazy. Rich Paul jumped right on, hit, hit the nigga Woj and said, that's not happening. <laughs> so I don't know why they even speculating all that. So I'm not even going to do an imaginary scenario when it's already been shut down. They didn't even let that shit linger. That shit was out for about, that shit came out 2 p.m. in the afternoon it was shut down by 2.19 p.m., so it ain't going to happen. But that's the shit that Knicks fans go crazy about. Yo, if we had Braun, <laughs> yo, if we had, yeah. yo, if we had Braun, it'd be crazy, right? They almost got me involved. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. You keep Braun sent you. <laughs> you start thinking like that. Start, start going They'll win it all. He, yeah. he might be gold. He get a chip in New York, though. Yeah, that, no, but that's a fact, too. He get that's a chip a- in New York. LeBron, you get a chip in New York, you be gold. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna, I ain't hold, gonna hold you. That, that may put him above my mic. I ain't might gonna be, hold you. That, 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 that'll put you above Mike. That'll but, put, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, that's the one I to put him above that. Mike. If he goes to New York, see, this is what happens. Yeah. We start bugging. <laughs> <laughs> we start bugging. I don't know out. what Rich Paul is talking about. You wanna cut the Jordan conversation forever? Go to New York and get a championship with that team and LeBron. That's a fact. He is getting good. It is no conversation, none. That's a fact. That's a hundred percent fact. You go to New York yeah. and deliver a championship in New York in City, the which, Mecca? which haven't had a championship in the real, not figuratively, yeah, the real fifty years, yeah. <laughs> not figuratively, uh, literally fifty-one years. The Knicks have not won a championship, so that means 
You delivering Cleveland, which I don't know. I think Jim Brown and them niggas was the last ones who won a championship <laughs> in yeah. Cleveland. You go to Miami. Miami's like, okay, everybody was there. You go to L.A. The reason why L.A. was dope to me, too, because it's a lot of pressure. And people try to put an asterisk next to the, the bubble championship. I say I, I don't do that because, to me, that's straight basketball. It's no fans. It's, yeah. it's AAU almost at the NBA level. But – it's a lot of pressure going to the Lakers because you got to think who you, you're coming behind. Pause. You got you got to be compared to Kareem. You got to mm -hmm. be compared to Magic, James Worthy, Byron Scott. Yeah, he Shaquille won't get Lone that Nail. in L.A. I don't yeah. care what he does. He won't get that in L.A. But he won a championship. That, the reason I'm bringing yeah. that up is because you deliver the championship. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is now you got New yeah, York. Yeah, you button. go to New York. You don't got to, Brian, you don't got to talk to nobody about nothing. You seal the deal. He feel like that now. Nah, he still got to talk to me. I'm just telling you how he feel. Yeah. But he that, can feel that way. He can feel that way. Pause. He definitely can feel that way. But there's niggas behind your back like. <laughs> but if you do this, pause. They can stop all of that. That's a fact. I agree with that. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's a great point. You go to New York and get a championship for the Knicks, yeah. you pass Michael. Yeah. Without, 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 without. The niggas just whispering, Mace is talking yeah. about. Yeah, I'm one of them niggas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of them niggas, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Shaq is one of those niggas. I, I tell you who all it's, those it's niggas are. Them. Yeah, there's a lot of niggas like you. Yeah. And Stephen A is one of them niggas. Yeah, but you fact. get a chip in New York, niggas had to change their tune. You heard it here, it, it is what it is. Okay, so before we move on to the next question, I kind of want to get you guys' views on the NBA player participation policy. Now that Joel Embiid actually is injured, does that change how you feel about it? Because a lot of people are debating whether they feel like Joel Embiid should have played in that game against the Warriors because that's the whole reason that he got hurt or if he should have just sat out. Do you think that should still remain or you feel like he should have played did. against the Warriors. So when he played in, against the Warriors and Jonathan yeah. Kaminga fell on him, that is why he's injured now. So a lot of people are debating Joel Embiid should have never played in that game to begin with, but they feel like he played to hit that mark to get the NBA player participation rule so he could be up for awards. So has your views changed on it or you no, still think you they gotta, should be a certain No, you got it. Cam said it best. The best ability is availability. Like if you're not available we got to stop with all of this stuff about people are great players if you're only great for a small amount of time. Like, if everybody is just like a nigga come in, pause, and we play eight fulls, and somebody come in on the last game and like, yo, I was cooking them, nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's our eighth game. <laughs> it's your first game, you know? So you super amped, you charged up, and everybody else is tired. That's what they was talking about last night. And that's what it's like when people are taking all of this rest. You're playing against people that are that are on, like, playoff time, and you're just, this is your 30th game. Yeah, um, look, you hurt, you hurt. And, and what happens is... Let's say, for instance, that's, you know, he they say he played that game so he don't miss a bunch of games and he wouldn't be eligible for MVP or first team NBA, all that, whatever. If you miss 35 games, say this rule wasn't in place mm -hmm. and you miss 30 games anyway, should you be winning the MVP or should you be first team all NBA, second or third team? If you miss a chunk of games, you shouldn't be eligible for those awards anyway opposed to guys. Let's say you sit there and play 50 yeah. games and somebody plays 72 games, but you you get the MVP because you was made a greater impact in the 50 games. But this guy was able to play 95, 90 to 95% of the season. I like the rule to be totally honest with you. If it's a, if you miss a certain amount of games, yeah. as much as people like you, as much as people fuck with you, you shouldn't be eligible to play. And this is what happens yeah. when people was crying wolf all these years for load management. Mm -hmm. Oh, nah, I'm taking a rest day. I'm doing this day. This is why this rule got in place. So now when niggas really get hurt, it seemed like, oh, the NBA forced me to do it so I can make first team all NBA. Yeah. Nah, that's the niggas before y'all crying wolf. When they wasn't hurt, now when y'all really hurt, y'all are, are going to be the one to suffer for it. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not mad at the rule. And they could fix a lot of these injuries. Like, if you really pay attention to it, before niggas stopped wearing, started wearing low tops, niggas wasn't getting hurt this much. 
Yes, they not on some tennis sneakers today. Yeah, he got some wild, yeah, yeah, some wild <laughs> shit. So, niggas say, yo, what are you wearing? Yo, niggas said that before that's he got exactly in the court. Right. Niggas say, yo, what are you wearing, bro? And that's what fucked him up today. I ain't gonna hold yeah, you. Yeah, cause your your ankle bone, your knee bone, that's all. You know, your leg is all connected. So one thing go the wrong way, that's what's getting niggas hurt, and they don't realize you trying to look cute is getting you hurt. Possibly. Niggas wasn't getting this getting hurt this much. And they and the rules are even easier now. You can't I'm, even foul niggas like you used to be able to foul niggas. This is true. Answer the question, I'm not mad at at the rule. That's play the games if you want the awards. And if you hurt, you hurt. Try again next year. Yeah. I agree with both of you guys' points. I definitely wanted you guys' perspective because that's like a running debate. People are like, you should never play, but honestly, yes, the best availability. Red shirt, purple yeah. shirt. Yeah. Now you purple shirting. Yeah. Look, if, if if you're playing, if you know you hurt or possibly be hurt, nigga, talking about Joel Embiid, don't play. Now nigga like, oh, I got to win the MVP. I'm going to risk it. Now you're out. Yeah. <laughs> out, nigga. So I dig it. Niggas want their accolades and their awards and everything else. But if it's going to cost you time, money, and your team possibly get into NBA finals, you took that chance. A medical biller has been sentenced to 12 years in federal prison after being convicted in an insurance fraud scheme that involved posing as NBA player Marcus Smart. He called pretending to be an <laughs> outraged patient or policyholder oh. who was facing a huge bill and demanding that the insur insurer pay up. So thoughts on the whole case itself and posing as Marcus Smart out of all people. Nigga foul for that. <laughs> he foul for that. Imagine you, you imagine you get off the plane, you going somewhere, and somebody somebody come somebody just the cops are waiting for you when you walk off the plane and they think you somebody else. Niggas already ran with your name and people is this could have went a lot of ways. So this is just foul. Especially if you're a medical biller. This is a person supposed to be trusted with private records and all that. This is crazy. I don't really know about uh, too much about this. I read it when I knew that we were going to be talking about it. But it isn't even just about claiming money. You know how much niggas is claiming niggas' identity, period? Like, every day it's a nigga that works so hard to steal your money that you work for. And a lot of it is just because we're in a digital era. Uh, the same nigga we talking about, my man Sin City, <laughs> he, he, he will not get cash out. He doesn't have Zelle. He doesn't have Vimo. He doesn't have Apple Pay. If somebody needs money from him, they got to go to the, to the Woo, Western Union. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said yesterday. He said, if your kids need money, it would mean more if you fly back and give it to them. <laughs> for wherever you at. <laughs> Is he said, what, what if he's going to the movie? He said, it, it would mean more if. Yeah, He's going to miss the movie, just sell the money. Exactly, but this is the type of shit he would have a field day with. Yeah. yeah see what I'm talking about? They're scamming. Now that you're using Marcus Smart Name, so on and so forth. Um, what I would say to about, and like I said, I don't want to get too in detail about this story because I don't have all the facts, just mm -hmm. what I read, but just be a scam, period. Uh, check on your shit every day. Um, check online if you're doing online banking. Uh, make sure your account, you you have it by phone. You go on Instagram a hundred or Twitter or Snapchat or TikTok a hundred times a day. Look in your bank account three, four times a day to make sure that everything is just right and not a problem because that's your money. As much as you could be on these social sites, you could check on your money at the same time. And for those people like my man Sin City, what I'm going to tell you is this. I'm not saying cash is going anywhere today or tomorrow. But what they're trying to do is make it obsolete. Now, will we be alive to see that? I'm not sure if we will be, but that's what they're trying to move the needle towards. I like cash, personally. I like having the opportunity to have cash in my pocket, and I like having credit cards as well. But check on y'all shit, nigga, because when y'all niggas slide a credit card into the machine at the gas station or when you check into a hotel or when you go to a dinner to a restaurant, once it goes in the terminal... Or leaves your hands. To be totally honest, we really don't know what happens after that. So that's that. That's crazy. 
Uh, I was thinking, did he get away with hundreds of millions at first? Um, I think so because that was a lot of money. Yeah, he was just running the medical billing companies, and then he got doctor scheduling different surgeries. And he only got twelve years. Yeah, people been into the wrong crimes. Yeah, you know, I say that all the time, bro. Nigga, go out here and stick up a grocery store and get eight years, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> And somebody and not that they should do any of the crime, but no, we no, saying yeah, yeah. with mathematics, the yeah. math ain't math. Right, and then you then you sit here and have a white collar, blue collar crime, and steal some old old people's money for twenty five million and get eighteen months. Yeah, and pay a fine and got three million of it sitting somewhere they didn't find. Right, pick your crimes wisely. <laughs> Advice of the day. All right, y'all. In response to Ben Simmons being booed by Sixers fans, he said, it's funny to me. I got grown men pissed off and yelling at me. It's not that deep. It's sports, but it comes with it, so I enjoy it. What do you have to say about his comments? Ben is the Cowboys to me from now on. Pause, for real. Ben Simmons is the Cowboys to me, killer. I'm not talking about him no more. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I don't care what he does. I'm not playing into it. <laughs> Yo, that's a great comparison. <laughs> Vincent is a cowboy to me. I'm not talking about it. Huh? Y'all gonna have to just count me out. That's a great one. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I have to agree with Mace because it's been just a little much too much Ben Simmons going on the last. Uh, Week or so, I'm and not. It's saying. for nothing. It's for nothing. It's, it's, yeah, it's not like he's. I'm. I'm gonna stick with my oath, yo. I'm not talking about you, Ben. No, nah. where you going is right. We're talking yeah. about everything. One time we did talk about him is because he made a comeback and he had a, almost a triple double. But everything outside of that is not basketball related. You're 100 percent right. It has nothing to do with basketball whatsoever. We're talking about what he's dressed like. We're talking about he has grown men mad. Look. At the end of the day, I don't know if Ben is really like hurt or mentally not want to play or whatever. But if think about it on the opposite side, if he's trolling niggas in real life, it's even crazier. Like, he I might, think he's trolling us. Yeah. yeah he, At he, this point, he's yeah, trolling yeah, us. He might really be trolling niggas. Like, look, I got grown men crying. I know he was in Philly. We used to play and all that, but I think that's for everybody who says something about him. So you know, how a person can't play, and they're like, "Aha, I got these niggas mad," yeah, but he yeah. can't play. So that's his part and his contribution to the team to get other niggas mad. Right. He's actually supposed to be, was the number one player. Yes, absolutely. That's why it doesn't work, Ben. You got to play. Right. You got to think about this. Let's say, look, and I'm not disrespecting Mikael Bridges or anybody else on um, the Brooklyn Nets, but if this was six years ago or, f or however long ago when he first got in the NBA, this, he was supposed to be the best player on that team. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to be the very best player on the Nets right now. Even when niggas thought about it when he got over there, it was like, okay, this all right, KD. All yeah. right. With Ben, they said, look, Philly was rough. It ended poorly. He needs a fresh start. So when he gets to the Nets and you got uh, Kevin Durant there as well, you're like, oh, this might go. Kyrie Irving, oh, this might be lit. And then it never goes, and it's still not going. So they say he's not an NBA player anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nigga Ben, man. <laughs> Niggas thought after four years he was going to catch LeBron. This is true. This is true. This is a far, this is this is horrible. This is horrible. You know, and you know, and, and, and you know, we talk about agents and, and uh, their management or people representation, their representation. And this is why I kind of got to give uh, Rich Paul and you no know, no favoritism or anything else. You got to think about this, right? You, this man got him an extension of 130 million and can't shoot a jump shot, like not even a little bit. You can't go to the basket. Nothing. It's phenomenal that you get 130 million because now what you got to think about this is makes what team would want him after his contract is up? 
That's what I'm saying. He playing around. <laughs> yeah. This nigga's playing around. Yeah. What, what team do you want you? And then not only want you, how much are they willing to give you? They can't spend a bag on you. They may get you because you light skin and 6'10 at this point. It may have nothing to do with basketball. And if you're tall, it's actually easier to shoot. A layup? Absolutely. Yeah. You can't you're even know that. If you're, if you're, a, what team do you see? Let's say, I don't know his contract, but let's say his contract is up at the end of the season. I'm not saying it is. If you're the Nets, do you want to keep him? If you don't want to keep him, where's he going? To the Auckland Razorbacks. <laughs> Australia. I have the back. To or New Zealand, one of them teams. Gotcha. They would love to have him. Yeah. That's where he's from. Send him back home. Send him back home. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what's next for Ben Simmons, y'all. I don't really know what's going on with him either. All right, we're going to go to break. When we return, we will talk about Tony Snell. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about she it She wanna be free Why am I in this one? She wanna be free I wish somebody told me the rules. Disagreements let her win, then it's cool. Even when I'm right to say about. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Pacers will play the Rockets. Underdog fantasy has Tyrese Halliburton at 13 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher. 13 and a half points. Who are they playing? Um, the Rockets. Yeah, hi. Okay. Pascal Siakam is at four assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? Lower. Lower. Okay. And Dylan Brooks is at three and a half first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher. Dylan Brooks is back. <laughs> Go higher, too. <laughs> okay. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks, too. So, y'all, it seems like people are starting to not feel as bad for Tony Snell anymore. This is the NBA player we talked about who was trying to get retirement benefits. But people saw his wife's TikTok account, and she has some TikToks posted, 12 Birkins, 1 Jet, videos of her chilling in Dubai and spending a lot of money on luxury items. And it just didn't rub people the right way. So, do you guys think this is a valid reason <laughs> for people... To not want to support him anymore, <laughs> reaching that deadline, which is now passed. Yo, <laughs> yo, this. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a is a is a is it a black thing that people cannot support you if you're doing well. Huh? Yeah, I think so. That's why I start laughing because somebody. Different coaches of people, they'll be doing very well. They'll have a brunch and people just donate millions of dollars. But if you show up with something nice and you try to get donations from black people, it's just not going to happen. You know, this is, when you say, when you started this off, this is a great point. And because you're a, a reverend yeah. or a pastor, like, you know, I used to think like that. Not with you, just in general. When like, yo, you supposed to support God, why do you have something nice? Yeah. Then you get older, you be like, why can't somebody who supports <laughs> God have a, have, have a chain, have a watch, have some money? Have, why, I don't understand that. You know, you get older and you realize that. You should like, yo, why can't they have something nice too? Because they're into church that they're not allowed to drive a six-figure car or they're not allowed to have a six-digit watch or not allowed to have a mansion because they're into the church. So that means when you're into the church, you're not supposed to be able to have nice things. No, nah, I don't get it either. So I'm glad you <laughs> brought that up. No, nah, seriously, because cause, cause it's like, when you when you think about it, you like, when you get older, you like, 
That don't even make no sense. The dumbest the people should have the nicest shit. Yeah, that that <laughs> that sounds dumb actually when you think about it. Because a person makes some money, and they could be like, "Oh, that nigga sold his soul to the devil," right, right? Right. But then it's like a person would say, "God is better than the devil." So if God is better than the devil, you should have more of you with right, God. Right. To, to your point. Yeah, absolutely. But this scenario too, it's um, I don't know her. And uh, it's just a unique situation because it's like, imagine their conversation, yeah. the mother, and, uh, and the husband and wife, you see what I'm out here trying to do. <laughs> Posting these Birkins. Yo, why would you do that now? 12 Birkins? Yeah. Yo, listen. Yo, listen. I think actually the 12 Birkins is overkill. If yeah, you, yeah, yeah. On a private trying to jet. raise the money. Yeah. And she's you like, can anyone beat this or I won? Oh, see this. See this. Yeah, that ain't is ain't gonna get you the money, and I yeah, go to church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ain't, that ain't gonna get it. You can't be that. You can't, do you that. can't be you that proud. You can't be prideful trying to get yeah. something from humility. That's crazy. Yeah, but but this, that's a great point. So it's like, yo, this is. But see, but then you, he may be like. See what I'm dealing with at home? This is this is what this I'm is why I need to help. This is, this is why I need the help. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> so it's a catch, that's why I said it's a catch 22, because you gotta think about this. She's not going to practice. Yeah. She's not going to play these games. She's not working hard to get back into the NBA. And I don't know what she does for a living outside of being his wife. She may have her own business and buys her own Birkins and so on and so forth. I have no idea what she does. But if this is all just being a Housewife, <laughs> like, God damn you! Now the problem is, it's bigger than you and the Burkins boo. The kids need health insurance yeah. for the rest of their kids life. Kids need health insurance, and you got the Burkin. Yeah, and you got the Burkins on the jet. How much is a Burkin? A lot. Like how much? Just approximately. This could go into the hundreds. Yeah. So she got thousand, twelve at of least. Them. Twelve on a private jet. This is how poor nigga thinks. If she got twelve of them, yeah, that's your health care right there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what a nigga would say. You good? That's for, your health care right there. Yeah, exactly. Who come first, your Birkins or the kids? This may be and listen. That's see, what I, they would tell you in counseling. They'd tell you you got your your priorities out of order. And, I, I, and look, I'm not saying this against her. That that would go for any person. This would be an interesting story because I don't know much about her or him at all. But when we was talking about the story the other day about we really wanted him to get a job, yeah. so um, it was bigger than him. I was looking at the story overall. I read I read a lot about it, and we was talking about how his kids had uh, autism. Yeah, and later in life, he found out not till he was grown that he had a form of it as well. I say he does not a high functional person. He probably has a high functional uh, autism. Like I was talking about Hasperger's. I don't know if that's what he has or not, but that's a high functional uh, form of autism. Um, and and when they read it, when I was reading it, it's like even when I met my wife, I was at a party for the players, and I was just sitting in the corner by myself. I didn't know how to socialize with people. I'm socially awkward, so I didn't know how to mingle with people. I just sat in the corner by myself, yeah. and my wife came over to me and said, you an NBA player? Are you sitting in this corner? You're not the life of the party? That's what she said to him? Yeah. That's how she, the first day she met him, and he's like, yeah. And he's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got one. Got one. So <laughs> Text her friend, twelve birthdays. <laughs> and a jet girl if you play it right. <laughs> For real though. Oh, you so that don't see it. No, 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 but we talking about the other one. How much he make? Like I had a friend of mine, right? A record label. You know this lady too. You introduced me to her when I was trying to get my record deal years ago. And she was high executive uh, in the music business. She was signing people. She was getting people deals. I'm not going to say her name. Getting people deals. And she held a lot of weight. Her name held a lot of weight. And so when Mace got his record deal, 
And it was my turn, like, to get hot in the street, and everybody wanted to give me a record deal. Um, I was basically using every record company to get what I could get before I made a decision. And this female, uh, she looked out. She was cool. I ended up not, not, not doing a deal with her, but she was cool. But I remember her coming to me, and she had money. She was uh, A&R. She had cribs, cars, et cetera. But I remember she was like, yo, Cam, you used to play ball, right? Yeah, I've been finding out. You know Chris Childs? I said, nah, I don't know Chris Childs. He, said, oh, he just got 24 million renegotiated with the Knicks. I'm trying to pull up on that nigga. <laughs> 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 Word to blood, yo. Word to everything I love, yo. So I'm sitting there like, you got all this already. Enough's not enough. That's, <laughs> not that's the much. rule. That's that's the rule. Of, um, one of the rules of power. You got to play a sucker to catch a sucker. Right. So I'm just. And I thought she had everything in the world, but she still needed some of Chris Child's uh, money. She knew how much he re renegotiated <laughs> for as well. Right. People are mad. Ex ESPN analyst David Pollock tweeted a meme with the sign "End Wokeness." And they're upset that he posted it on the first day of Black History Month. Do y'all find anything wrong with what he said? What did he what did his sign say again? N wokeness. N? Like the letter N? Like end wokeness. N -wokeness. Dead all that shit. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a quote, I can read it if y'all. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go it ahead. doesn't even make sense to me. He said, Wokeism is a demonic ideology intended to replace God's truth with the lies of the world. Wokeness ends through a great awakening, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. The black people to sound like you being racist. <laughs> <laughs> Point blank. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yo, you can put all that shit there. Yeah. The black people would just sound like, yo, it's racist. Yeah, then you pick, Yeah, then you do this shit on the first day of Black History Month. Niggas don't really want to hear all that philosophy shit you got going on. Fuck you mean stop being woke. Niggas, now you want us to be stupid. That's how niggas going to take it. So, so you just want me to be sleep? Yeah, you want me to be sleep? Fuck is you talking about <laughs> and wokeness? Nah, nigga, we lit. <laughs> Fuck you. We started getting lit when niggas started getting woke. Niggas started acting crazy. So when I say crazy, not bad, but I'm talking about yeah, the spike. Yeah, people started standing up to everything when that wokeness came about. Yeah, because you had, listen, you had the George Floyd situation. Then niggas went wild and started mm -hmm. bugging out over that around the country to where all these corporations want to do donate millions and millions of dollars to the urban community, quote unquote. And then you had the pandemic where the niggas just lost it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it seemed like, and, and listen, I'm old enough to know, uh, I've, been, I've been around, I'm not saying I'm like fucking 100, but I've been around, and I've been, no, and, and I like, because I've been the good ever's. I seen the crack ever, and when I say that, I got to see it to where I knew I'm never going to do no shit like that. And then you got the 90s with R&B. The reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because I seen all the mad, mad different eras. And to be honest, during the pandemic, for about a year and a half, I would say to me, mm -hmm. it seemed like it was our country. <laughs> yeah, I could have walked off on that. It seemed like you expound. This is why you need another uh, your best friend that's as ignorant as that. Yo, I, expound. <laughs> yo, it seemed like we was running shit for yeah. a minute. We like, yeah, oh, we had niggas yo, under pressure. Oh, police scared. <laughs> What? Yeah. Yo, niggas Defund like, the police? Bro, yeah, yo, fam. That's when niggas start going crazy. Yo, fam, I said, wait that, a minute that, now. That's a fact, yo, fam. Niggas doing interviews, black niggas walking up, snatching <laughs> the mic. Yo, fuck that Floyd, nigga. Niggas acting crazy, yo. It was crazy. I'm like, oh, we run this yeah. shit right now. I remember I was driving through Harlem, and these niggas was acting crazy. Yo, 132nd and 7th, you know, it's like Lorraine. Shout out to my nigga um, MK and everybody over there at Lorraine's. And, but it's like four or five clubs there. That's like, from three to four a.m., it's just lit over there. Yeah. And they, they cops want people to leave. I got this shit on video. And niggas said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and they had like 10 police cars, and they throwing bottles and all that. They're like, we not going nowhere. And the police just backed up and let them do whatever the fuck they want to do. And I'm like, 
Well, oh, I'm so sorry. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like that was like, man, just go ahead. And I promise you, during the pandemic, niggas was selling TVs, Richard Mills, everything, Lamborghinis outside the projects, <laughs> all type of shit. Like, yo, niggas crazy. had money. It was crazy. Yeah, it was wild. It looked like we ran shit for a little minute. Like, listen, I promise you, murder. I'm like, yo, after I seen them do that shit on Seventh Avenue. If I ran every red light during the pandemic, I didn't stop at no red lights, in, at least in New York City. I was like, I'm, y'all niggas, I let these niggas just run y'all niggas down the block. Oh no, nah, I wish y'all would try to pull me over. I'm not stopping. That little 12, 18 months, it looked like it was ours for a minute. Yeah. So now a nigga telling us don't stay yeah, woke. Yeah. <laughs> in wokeness. Yeah, yeah, and wokeness. <laughs> niggas like, nah, we trying to bring it back <laughs> to where it was at a couple of years ago. I think it's bad time and nobody want to hear what your philosophy is about it, bro. Just my opinion. All that just sounds extra at that point to all of us. So. Right. Okay. Rudy Gobert went viral for a remark he had regarding his future Hall of Fame speech. He said, at my Hall of Fame speech, I'll be able to joke about how many times I got to enjoy some extra vacation because I got snubbed for the All-Star game. So what was you guys' initial reaction to his statement? That's a good way to make light of it. False. Just, just say that say that this is gonna be a part of your Hall of Fame speech. That's a big statement. You basically know, saying he automatically going to the Hall of Fame, son. Yeah, that's basically what he said. That is what he said. And I think it's some some kind of like truth to some of what he said that he did get snubbed, even though I can't think of who you would take off the team to put him on there. Normally, when your team is doing that good and they've been number one for a while, probably not still number one, but they've been number one so long that three players from a team is supposed to be on that all-star team. That's just common courtesy. Um, yeah, Mason's right about that. Um, I don't fuck with that nigga. He, he had COVID running rampant in the NBA, man, with that all that touching niggas, thinking it's a joke, touching the microphones. Nigga, for really, you might have put niggas in a bubble one, nigga. I know it started getting global, but you really start that shit in the NBA. The way you gave it to Donovan Mitchell, that's kind of what broke up y'all chemistry in, in Utah, because y'all you got this man sick. And this man had an attitude, because he like, yo, you playing games now. I remember looking at an interview not even that long ago, maybe a month ago, Donovan Mitchell was like, yo, nobody really knew what was going on with COVID. I had to sit in the basement and not speak to nobody because niggas still like, you know, in other words, had the cooties. You know what I'm saying? So, But you was killing niggas. Yeah, so exactly. end of the day. a lot of people did die from COVID. Absolutely. A couple friends of mine. So if he's playing around, yeah. definitely. I ain't forget it. Yeah, that's why I brought it up. But as far as... As far as uh, all-star snubs and so on and so forth, I think, to be totally honest with you, Rudy Gobert, is you, I think you have a decent career. I think it's, you know, it isn't Shaq, it isn't Hakeem Olajuwon, it isn't Joel Embiid, it isn't the Joker. I think you have a decent career. But I think, me personally, people are remembering you more from the COVID shit than the basketball That's shit. That's what I just said. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So... Let's let's worry about that. Let's worry about you out playing COVID uh, to a certain degree. When I say out playing COVID, I'm, I may be putting it in the wrong phrase, but I'm trying to yeah. say be remembered for something different. And if you was joking, and if your jokes led to the NBA almost being canceled due to COVID, why are you still joking about the Hall of Fame? Pick a new way, a new approach. Make a donation, nigga. They always help me. <laughs> 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 Yo, Kim, is a pastor now. Yo, Kim said, yeah, you ain't got no problems with you, young man. Just make a donation. <laughs> make a donation, nigga. Period. Yo. And then last topic before we wrap, Adam Silver is finalizing an extension to remain as commissioner. For the NBA, for several more years, it could go up to 2030. What do you guys, like, how do you guys feel about Adam Silver as commissioner? Do you like him? No. Um, before I get into that, I don't remember, 
Maybe I wasn't paying attention that they were reinstating David Stern, but it, it seemed like that term is coming along uh, uh, pretty frequently. And I think he, I think he's doing well you with this. You say reinstating David Stern, what do you mean? David Stern was the commissioner before, yeah, before Adam Sill. Right. But I don't remember him having to be like. Reinstated? Got reinstated, what you said. Okay, you gotcha. Know? Yep. I just thought he was the commissioner. Until further you know, notice. Until further notice. <laughs> right, so gotcha. It seemed like this one is like every couple of years, let's see if we're going to get it extend his arm um, time. David think, Stern was moving like Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to get until, until further notice. Yeah, man. niggas is doing the draft. You ain't even want to get drafted if Stern's not up there with a, a hat fact. for you. Like, I remember Stern, God bless the day, Kobe won the All-Star MVP, and, uh, and, and David Stern was presenting with the trophy. Kobe had the trophy right here. David Stern said, above your hat. So, oh, I said, above your hat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks. Stern, Stern but, was like the mob. The mob, yeah, the mob. And he yeah. was like really yeah. laughing about it. Right. That's he, a, that's he, the truth. Exactly. But I do like um Adam Silver. He's he's actually brought a lot of interesting things to the NBA and great things that I thought would never come to the NBA. So I think he's doing an exceptional job. I agree with Mace. I think it's Adam Silver is great for the NBA. Um, you got people who may say differently, but I would say about 70 to 80% minimum, that is, people like Adam Silver. And not only that, he's a player's commissioner. Um, when the guy from the Clippers said the racist shit about Magic Johnson, and it was a big deal, he made about two days to say he's not he's just suspended, you're out the league. Yeah, you sell your team. You're out the you're league. You're out of here. When emails started floating around about the Phoenix owner, look, we, yeah. look we're going to give you some time, but you're out the league. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Listen, Draymond says he's going to retire from the game. Oh, Draymond's a commodity. Let's do that. I don't know this. This is my yeah. little bit of input. Let's do the analytics. Oh, he's selling tickets. Oh, he does it. Draymond, you're Draymond, not retiring. You can't, <laughs> you can't you're not retire. Retiring. You're I not, still got your name, Yeah, Draymond. yeah you good. Listen, we going to get you back in, but you've yeah. been wilding. Yeah, Don't you've been like, wilding. It's been indefinite. Like, yeah, but just chill out. I got you, though. So I think that he sees the climate of what's going on, and the NBA handles it accordingly, and I like him a lot. Even yeah. like this thing right here that just passed the in-season tournament, that could have been risky. Yeah, and you know, I could have been real risky, but to me, it he was successful. Chances. Yeah, he taking chances. Even what he did with Ja, like he, the first time Ja wild out, he could have abandoned him. Then he was right. like, "Nah, we're gonna give him another shot." I spoke to him. Right. We good. Right. And then yeah. he did it again. So he was like, "Yeah, but but like it's you said, not on me." Right. Exactly. And that's a great point. He, he, nigga said, "Y'all pull up on you so I can holler at you." <laughs> you know, he said he, we spoke. Yeah, we spoke. We, <laughs> yo, he good. We good. He good. Exactly. He said he's not gonna do it again. I'm gonna take his word. Yes, that's another thing. Like, yo, nigga said he does the same thing. Yeah. Yo, yo, Kyrie, where you at? Let me pull up on you real quick so I can let niggas know. Kyrie is not racist. The furthest <laughs> thing he is from racist. I, I just spoke to him personally. <laughs> he is not racist. So. I think he's that type of commissioner to where the players fuck with him and he's you know, he's moving the needle, man. So I'm happy for that. Yeah, and shout out to Kyrie and his new sneaker out there. Shout out to Kyrie. Yeah. So in addition to all those things Adam Silver has done, the NBA's revenues have also nearly tripled. So he's helping the players, NBA's making a lot of money, and he's implemented a lot of things that we haven't seen. So shout out to Adam Silver. But that's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh,